Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos, a take two. I've just had to shot Archie out of the room because all I've tried to talk through is clippy, 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 backwards and forwards with his feet. Right, uh, thought I'd have a go on the Corporal uh, to get me some ideas on, on how I wanted to paint them. Uh, very, very nice figure as I've said before. Uh, Corporal's tapes could have been very slightly bigger. Uh, the problem is when you're doing uh, rank markings, unit markings, which you can just barely see there. Um, you either go and make them too big so you can make them actually look what they're supposed to. Uh, I tend to not like doing that. I prefer to literally just there. They hint at it, if that's want of a better word. So my little unit here, although they're going to be for sale and not for me, uh, I'm calling the uh, King Shropshire Light Infantry which is the next door county to me, or one of the two. Well, all right then, as I'm smack banging about five, in the middle of five counties, but uh, Shropshire anyway. Uh, their regiment used to be uh, King Shropshire Light Infantry before they were also thrown in the rubbish bin of history, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, I, I've, I've just personalised the figures. I, I you know, uh, I, I think giving them a... Uh, rather than just little metal figures or little plastic figures, uh, if you can actually say, uh, especially historicals, they 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 represent something. If that makes sense. So these are the King's Shropshire Light Infantry, uh, more commonly abbreviated uh, as it was in the army uh, to the K KSLI because on the shoulder flashes, where we'd have a, a red bar or a green bar, depending. But I believe these are red bars. Uh, they would have, like my own regiment, uh, was amalgamation of two of the Staffords. So we used to be South Staffords and North Staffords. Um, and they would have had their shoulder titles like that. Uh, obviously King Shropshire Light Infantry is a bit uh, is a bit big to put on a, on a flash. So they were abbreviated to KSLI. That's what people tended to call them. Uh, you can't really see it, but underneath there's a triangle in black. And inside the triangle is an inverted red triangle for the 3rd Infantry Division. Uh, then there's three little red bars which you can't see and I've not, I, I couldn't, re without making the flash too big, I couldn't really depict three red bars. Um, so it's a red square with a bit of black in there. Um, and that represents, they were, the, they were the 185th Brigade or in the 185th Brigade, uh, which was the 3rd Brigade of the division. So it was uh, three red bars, one on top of each other. Obviously if you were the first brigade in that division uh, you'd have one red bar and obviously two and obviously these guys had three. Uh, unlike the regimental system which they've more or less pushed on as now, um, Great Britain, United Kingdom, whatever you want to call us at the time now, uh, we don't operate the regimental system in the field like a lot of other uh, people around the world. Uh, so we don't have 1st, 2nd and 3rd Battalion serving together very often. Uh, there's literally, they can mix, it's designed especially so they can mix and match battalions, whoever happens to be there at the time. Um, it's a lot easier that way for us anyway. Uh, so you'd have uh, King Shropshire Light Infantry. I believe, uh, I believe the Norfolk 2nd, because this is 2nd Battalion, I believe could have been 2nd Battalion. Norfolk's were were in the brigade as well. Um, yeah, just to, just to confuse you. So yeah, we don't have the regimental system as in we do now. They've turned it on its head in the last ten years. Um, but uh, we still might have one, two, or even three battalions. And obviously in wartime, four, five in the Great War, each regiment could possibly have about eight battalions. Uh, but they don't always serve together. Um, they will very rarely serve with their sister battalions. Anyway, just thought I'd tell you that. Uh, on top of the helmet, you've got uh, Hessian tied into a, a scrim net. The scrim is the same stuff that he's wearing as a, as a um, like a, uh, what do you call it, scarf? I believe that's a word. Um, but on the one side, and there would be different, sometimes they could be all dark greens, light greens. Uh, it literally was Hessian that they died, so it could be anything. 
you can cover it in boot polish to dye it up or whatever. Uh, so I've done that. Uh, this very light colour through here, uh, that's actually a first field dressing. I thought that was brilliant of Paul Hicks to have noticed that. Um, quite often the Toms would put a first field dressing, so a first aid dressing, under their helmet scrim, um, which could easily be torn open and obviously grab that out for for the you usually try and use your own field dressing on your own on yourself. You tend to if you were always taught if you use it on somebody else, you've not got one for yourself when you need it. Um yeah, so so yeah, my corporal's tapes could have been a bit bigger. Um note to self for a future unit, but it still says what it is. Uh, I've gone with the black baker like type of uh, scabbard for the bayonet. Uh, I have seen them uh, with a with a, a webbing bayonet uh, frog as well, I believe. Um, well, sorry, that's the frog, but the, the scabbard for the bayonet. Uh, respirator. Uh, that's the small entrenching tool. Which actually, I might need a bit of black around that and just see. Might be a touch still of the base paint in there. But yeah, that's a trenching tool. It would have like a mattock on the one edge and a sort of small spade on the other. And you could just about dig a shell scrape for it, or if you're at a push for a foxhole. Uh, but they very soon got, as I say, all the that's the head of the pickaxe there. Um, so that's our figure. Is it a Mark II stain? Very slightly bent on the end of the, the barrel. When I was putting it, I didn't want it because I'd lost the one tip on the other. It's fairly sturdy metal actually, uh, but I was a bit dubious about bending that any further. Uh, in case I, I you know, busted up. As I say, facially, um, facially, I've gone for a colder look on this one. Northwest Europe, crossing the Rhine probably. So he's got his pouch open there with his magazines. Lovely, lovely work. Keep gushing about them, but they really are nice. Uh, I did write this down. I think I did anyway. Uh, I, I did a bit, as I say, it's a bit of an experiment because I was just looking for what I wanted to do uh, with the uniform. Uh, I can't tell you what colours rough, roughly I put in for the leather jerkin, or his waistcoat, in other words, on, that he's got on. Um, just orangey browns. On a black brown base with 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 uh, orange and um, golden brown put onto it, uh, and then it really was just a mishmash. It's what I usually how I usually paint. To be fair, it's what I've got on the palette. Um, I'll usually convert that to what I want to what I want to paint it look like. But yeah, oh, you can't go wrong with orangey browns. Um, so that's that. But the the actual battle dress and the battle dress trousers uh, I, this is off again I just don't write things down and I've got a shot memory with me had problems but uh, I believe this was it uh, base was a uh, dark brown with uh, RAF dark brown these are AK dark brown RAF dark brown with RAF dark green mixed in uh, then I added a bit of English uniform in with it for a second highlight uh, then English uniform then English uniform with gold brown and I believe it might have been yellow ochre or gold brown as a highlight. Uh, shadows were put in. Uh, I used some thin down of the RAF dark green in places and some rubber black in the darkest uh, recesses. Uh, you know, people might say, well, it's too light, but it's for the tabletop. It needs to stand out, in, in my opinion. That's, that's why I've gone for a lighter one. Um, uh, the gaiters there, I will put. Uh, I will slightly change the gaiter colours on different figures because the di again, coming out of a, a million and one different factories, uh, you know it. Uh, they were all different types, so you could have a lighter, darker gaiters, greenier ga green greenier is that a word? A green, you know, more green coloured gaiters. Uh, webbing could be again slightly slightly uh, paler green even uh, they could be more sandy brown uh, it really was a, a mishmash of colors really um, I've just gone with these because I thought they they look better on the on the background of uh, of the of the, the waistcoat and the uh, 
and the battle dress. So yeah, if you see a bulge on the on the helmet, it's a first field dressing that's underneath it. So just put some little dabs. If you, I've done it green already, and I kept thinking that's a first field dressing under there. And I looked at some more pe photographs of the time, and they, it, indeed it was. So fair play to the bloke. Done a good bit of good bit of uh, checking out there, and um, yeah, I just I just got some what was on my palette, some pale sand, I believe. Uh, it's roughly a pale sand buff coloured uh, uh, packet and uh, I think they did change from time to time but it's mainly that and uh, yeah just dabbed a bit of bit of that in and if you if you just dab it uh, in the in the holes of the scrim uh, it will it will leave the, the 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 green on top so you can just about get a, a feeling that it's still underneath the scrim in fact, I even just put my finger and gently just wiped it across just to make sure. Not too hard, obviously, you wipe all your paint off because he's not varnished yet. But uh, <laughs> um, So, yeah, just thought I'd show that. Um, as I say, face, uh, if anybody's really interested, I'd say the f face is a, 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 and skin tones are... Sometimes people just like to use them straight out of the pot, and I do them myself uh, sometimes. Uh, but this guy, I don't know if it's, it's the light's a bit bright, really. But yeah, it was a couple of bases of of uh, dark uh, base base flesh, I believe it's called, off AK. It's like a, a very slightly orangey brown, reddy brown. Put those on. Uh, I then went to Vallejo Basic Flesh, I believe. Uh, got a, a tiny piece of magenta. Uh, magenta is really strong, so be careful because it will just turn your thing really pink. And, uh, and it did on this occasion, <laughs> but I still put it on, and uh, and then I just worked different colours into it to change the the hues hues of the tones of the the flesh, if that makes sense. So some ready orange. So I was trying to put everything cold, just to put a bit more warmth into the face slightly. I put some red orange, really watered down, dry the not give it a dry brush, but take all the excess off. And I mean a load, you know, you just want to want it literally um, you know you, you don't want to be painting it on if that makes sense it's almost like a dry brush uh, you're just using a damp brush really with this stuff on it and um, and I just put it in the, the, the places I wanted it to be warmer so on the the, the cheeks um, and then to uh, and I also use shadow flesh from AK uh, in places there's also some violet put into some of the places um, uh, and uh, and that was around the nose particularly um, slightly on the back of the hand here near the knuckles uh, that shadow flesh, the dark stuff that I've put in under the, the cheekbones just to bring it up more and then I actually use uh, um, ice yellow of all things to uh, to highlight very very slightly on top of the 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 light warmed up areas of where the orange brown of uh, the red orange is and again with that you are literally watering it down a lot <laughs> you don't want to obviously just put a fairly heavy coat of ice yellow on because he he will look like he's jaundiced um, but it just it just brings up uh, the, the highlight up a bit more without you making it too warm because you know me, I like to actually make my faces fairly orange these days with um with a like the luminous green, not, well, yeah, I think it's luminous green, laser green, whatever you call it, and and really bring them up. But I just thought with these fellas, they're in northwest Europe. Uh, could be winter time, Octo anywhere from you know October to you know May when April, whatever May when Germany fell type of thing. Uh, but they're, they're obviously fairly cold and whatever they've still got a lot of uh, that type of weather gear on so there you go sorry if i've talked i just thought it might be of interest to somebody out there that uh, was fancy doing these themselves uh, if you've got any more questions obviously fire them up i'll try and answer them uh, I, as i say I'm a, I'm a devil for not writing recipes down i never have done and i don't know why i don't with my head problems i you know i get especially short-term memory it seems to be fairly shot these days um, but uh, but yeah, uh, fantastic figures yet again. I keep saying it, uh, and will really reward you um, if you spend a bit of time on them. Really nice figures. 
So thank you very much. Uh, which one shall we go for next, Gav? And we shall just pick one out. Uh, and I believe I'm, I'm literally doing these one at a time. Um, actually, no, I won't. Uh, yeah, well, well, we're on a roll. Another jerking figure. Um, we'll do this guy. Uh, we'll do this guy next. Uh, he's more or less if not got exactly the same webbing details on and stuff but uh, he's, we haven't got to one of the smocks yet <laughs> that's going to be interesting uh, but uh, we'll get there I don't believe he's got a smock on has he got a smock on this as well no I believe I believe that's just the jerking with the, with the collar pulled up if it got a collar on let me just check yeah I don't believe that's got a win a what a windproof, uh, the windproof camouflage smock on. Because a lot of these guys, I think I've said it before, like, uh, come on, go find one. Um, yeah, I believe this guy. He's not in the shop very well with the others behind him. He's got a he's got a smock on, so his arms will be camouflaged. Whereas this guy, I believe. Is in battle. The, the grey one is obviously in the same battle dress as uh, guy to the left, the corporal. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much for stopping by. I've stuck a couple of photos off at the end. They're not very good, so I've just put them under the painting lamp. Shove these couple of my usual black card just to quickly give you a, an idea. Um, but I thought uh, there's been a fair bit of interest in these, so I thought you, you know you might want to just see them as they go. Now, I'd normally paint them all like five at a piece or six at a piece, but. Um, I'm just enjoying doing one at a time, keeping a small amount of paint on um, because I can play around with the different colour webbing and stuff like that from, from figure to figure. So as I say, this guy here might have slightly different gaiters on colour wise. It just all just breaks up. A, you don't have to have a figure that is um, exactly the same, if that makes sense. Even the leather jerkins, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they can be very slight, slightly different, you know, you might have a, a more dark brown one uh, compared to, you know, put more orange, I will probably be keeping the more orangey red looks on, the, done the same as I've done on the Corporal. Um, this, this guy has a, see we've got a couple of bits and pieces on there to check out. I have to keep going back to reenactors and stuff just to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm knowing what I'm looking at, but uh, but yeah, I'll just mix them up and just so that, you know, when the unit's done, they don't look exactly all the same. So again, waffling, do apologise. Uh, but thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. And we'll catch each other very soon on another video.